How are we going, everybody? I'm standing in front of a citrus tree again. Yes, that's a citrus tree. It's a lemon tree, see it? Look, it's got lemons on it. Now, the reason why I'm back in here, back here again, is I've done about 100 emails, and if you're still waiting for yours to be responded to, I'm getting there. By the next three, four days, I do hope to get them all done. So, 100 emails today, and about 90 of them were on citrus trees questions. So, I thought, let me just run through some of the uh, issues that we have that occur with citrus trees. And I've done a lot of that recently already, but I thought I need to re re regroup on this again because still a lot of people out there are missing out or not getting quite the, the, the right information on maintenance on citrus. So let's start from the ground up. They need really good drainage, well-drained soil. They need rich soil, they're big, they're, they're big eaters, so they need to be fed regularly. So your soil, when you water it, it needs to drain away really freely. When you apply fertiliser, do it on a regular basis, and I suggest every three months. So the change of season is the best way to keep a calendar clock on when to feed your trees or what to feed your trees as well. Now, there are lots of different fertilisers out there in the industry. There's plenty around in circulation for years. We've got our own as well. I've done my trials, as you can see here. This has had superfood, black grid and uh, liquid fertilisers. Just recently, in the last couple of days, we got yellowing off. Now, that's because we've had some constant rain. It just broke away now. That's why we're out here filming. That's magnesium, so this needs black grit at the moment. Now, black grit, as we mentioned already, reduces the acidity level, raises the pH, uh, so you need to compost at the same time. So whenever you're applying black grit to green it up and help the fruit ripen, add your compost and fertiliser as well. It may not be every three months, it might be every six to eight weeks, depending on the, the growth rate of your tree. Now, this is a lemon tree. Not all trees grow as fast, not all trees have the yellowing off. This is now ready for harvesting, that's why the energy is going to there and not to the leaves. You'll find new growth developing later on because this is still ripening, there's no new growth on it. Well-drained soil, I'm repeating that. We're going to go into the pest and diseases in a second. Superfood, black grid, liquid fertiliser. If you're going to try our fertilisers, you guarantee for it to work. Well, a 99% chance of guarantee because that 1% could be something that you've done wrong or nature's done to your plant. So we can't guarantee it 100%, but we know the products work when you apply it. Now, problems above the tree. First one is, do we prune? A lot of people, let's go to another one. This is quite sparse looking. Let's go over here. Follow me around. Walking over to the mandarin here. This one dropped all its leaves. Here's a couple of good tips, actually. Rabbits, huh? So this is happening the same as well now. So the fruit's starting to ripen on the mandarin, but we're getting a little bit of yellowing in between here. See all this yellowing there? That's magnesium deficiency. If the vein itself, I'll pick a leaf off so you can see it. A lot of photos came in like this on the emails. If the vein, see the green part there, the vein? If that was yellow and the yellow part, which is in between the vein, was green, that's what we call manganese deficiency. And you would use the product, which is basically manganese. So in this case here, it's magnesium, which is quite the common problem when you've got fruit on the tree, and that's what you need to put is black grit. And that will fix that problem. So I was talking about thinning out. I've taken out the center here. If you bring the camera over the top, you'll be able to see through the center how nice and open it is. See, that's the vase shape we've got going on there. This will be held down as it gets bigger and more sturdier, the branches will open up. You need to take out all the dead, diseased and damaged wood of your plants, not just citrus trees, but because we're talking citrus, on your citrus tree you'll find it's quite obvious when the branch is dead. It's literally brown on the citrus, no leaf or fruit on it. They need to be taken off. The more dead wood there's left inside, the less likelihood of new growth coming through. There's some reaction that happens that we can't see, but the plant uh, notices or picks up on and stops it from growing through again where there's dead wood. So clean out the centre. If it's long and lanky like that lemon tree over there, which I'm going to harvest and prune back, that needs to come back down to a more manageable shape. You can have a nice arching effect like that if you like with a heavy fruit on it but ultimately citrus trees need to grow up or just horizontal espalier framework that is so prune off long lanky bits remove the center out of them and uh, actually i've got photos which we'll share and talk about the first one you're looking at now is the orange with scale all over it. It's got those little speckled brown spots all over the fruit. That there needs to be sprayed with eco oil or homebrew olive, um, olive oil if you like, or vegetable oil. So you can make your own oil spray. 
spray that on a scale, but it also affects the leaves and it can get excessive. And if left untreated, you start developing black sooty mold, which is the blackening of the leaves and it suffocates the leaf, stops the sunlight and things like that. It brings on the ants. There's a lot of problems and side effects that occur when left untreated. And the tree obviously starts to shed its leaves, drops its fruit, and eventually over time it'll actually kill the tree off. Now that's scale. The other problem that occurs, and we've done this before a million times and I'm going to say it again obviously, is citrus gall wasp. Now gall wasp is a gall, a lump that appears on the branch of the tree and inside is a nest. And when you have that occurring, there's nothing on these ones thankfully. I don't see any here. Um, but if they do appear on your tree or you have noticed them already on your tree, you need to basically remove the active ones. And the difference between an active and a non-active gall wasp or gall on a branch is the ones that are non-active will have little tiny holes in them, which is where they've emerged from. That's the insect inside the larvae when it's matured to become an adult fly or wasp and it flies off. Now, if you've got holes like that in those galls, leave them there. You don't have to cut them off the tree. The tree, it's already gone through its life cycle. It's the galls or the galls that you see on the tree that do not have any holes or just starting to swell out. They're the ones that are active and, and actively growing and sucking, sucking the sap out of the tree. You need to remove those. Now, once you've done that, you need to spray the tree with CGWS. That is going to be his lifesaver. Basically, a shield or a barrier film over the tree, which leaves a white film. If it rains and it has been raining like this, you're going to have to apply it again after the, the rains have gone. But that film is the protection that's given to the tree against gall wasp, also leaf miner. We've mentioned that before. Do some research. You can go on our YouTube um, page and look up citrus trees. You'll see everything you need from A to Z on looking after a citrus tree. So CGWS will look after your citrus gall wasp, your leaf miner, your scale as well, but not the active ones there. So anything that's already on the tree, you should use Eco Oil to flush and suffocate and then apply your CGWS on top to stop it and protect it from any further infestation on the plant. So gall wasp, leaf miner, which is the curling of the new leaves. We've shown that before. Haven't got any on this one. I don't think we've got any on those ones there either, but it's now like trails on the new leaf. You need to remove those and burn them and then spray the tree. So gall wasp, citrus leaf miner, scale. Um, what's the other one that we were talking about? These are the three main insects, I suppose, uh, and rust. Now, as we get into the cooler weather, if you get a couple of spikes in hot temperature, you'll find with the moisture in the air, you'll start seeing rust developing on the underside of the leaves. Here, look at that, the first leaves I picked up, just back on the citrus leaf miner. See that there, the snail-like trail? Now, that's citrus leaf miner. Now, if you leave that untreated, it'll cause the new growth to become deformed and stop the tree from fruiting properly. So you need to cut them off and spray the plant. And we said rust as well, so I was going for the rust, and what you get are brown spikes on the underside of the leaf and if it becomes excessive it'll appear on the top side of the leaf and eventually the rust spores, spores will spread around the tree cause problems now that needs to be treated with a disease control pack which is a bluestone based fungicide spraying on the tree every two weeks now if you're doing an insect spray protection and a fungicide spray they need to be seven days apart and generally speaking, I do the fungicide, I reckon, if you've got both problems, and it's really unfortunate and bad luck if you've got rust, scale, leaf miner and gall wasp all on the one tree at the same time. That is really a tough gig. I reckon you'd have to cut the tree really hard, at least 30-40% of the tree back, depending on the size and shape of the tree, obviously, and then do a fungicide spray, first of all, to get rid of that and suppress all those spores, and it's to the point of dripping. It's got to drip off the tree that the spray that is, the, the solution that you've applied like rain does after a heavy rainfall. It's got to be dripping off the tree so you've given it a good coating. Then seven days later, start your CGWS applications to fix it. So, rust, mildew, not really, leaf miner, scale, uh, gall wasp, and snails, yeah, snails is another problem, and rabbits, come here, come here. How, look at this amazing work of art. This, this is an amazing, no, 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 th that's not bad. This one's good. Look at this work of art, huh? You like that? You know, that's, you know, I suppose nights upon nights of, you know, strenuous efforts by our little rabbits that come around here and literally rip the bark off the plant. That one in particular rabbit's not around anymore. It's got baby onions inside with it. It's got a couple of bay leaves with it, a little bit of olive oil or red wine. Mwah, delicious. So if you get that happening on your plants, it could be rabbits or rats or anything else, you need to paint that over. Now, I did not paint it. As you can tell, I haven't painted it. 
And the reason why I ever painted this is because I walked up to it and I thought, ooh, well, let's see if this survives without it. Because I can see this, you know, the, the sap has to flow through and it's got to find its way through here to get around to this part, around here, and work its way up through. So there's no complete ring bark anywhere. There's a lot of bite marks. Tree guards is probably the safest and easiest way to control this. Look at that, we've got rabbit poo. At least it's fertilized it for me. See the rabbit poo? How good is that, huh? It doesn't walk away and just damaging the plant, it actually fed it. So tree, tree guards are vital. Other than that, you've got tree, uh, tree guard paint, I think it is, or steriprune paint. Um, you can apply that, or tree stack is the other one, or hydrated lime. You can apply that, mix that with water and paint it over. All those should act as a deterrent and stop it, but this really happened, I won't say overnight, but over a couple of days, and before we realised it, damage is already there. So we're going to fix that up. The tree's okay, it's been about a week or so since it happened, and you can see okay on top, it's still got a couple of yellow leaves. Typical of happening with the change of weather, cold weather. Uh, get rid of all these, give it a feed, give it a prune, paint the trunk, do the sprays that you need to do, and avoid using synthetic fertilizers. I mean, that's the last thing I'm going to say this morning. No more chemical fertilizers in your garden. If you start doing that, expect some bad results at you know times. It's not, it's not a good thing, simple as that. I mean, I've been around gardening a long time. Most of you know how long I've been around. I used to sell a lot of that product and I've stopped doing that and I've stopped using that product and I work on nature. Nature will take its place you know, the microbes in the soil will do their job as long as you stimulate them. Uh, the predators will turn up, you know, and take control of the pests. Not so much the rabbits, I mean, I'm the predator for the rabbit, but other little insects and pests like that. We have got our CGWS and things like that, but sometimes you can step, step back I mean, give it a couple of weeks to see if the predator does walk into the garden and take over and look after the pests in the garden. If it doesn't, that's when you reach for the CGWS Eco, Go, Eco Boots, uh, what do you call it, Eco Oil, Eco Neem and things like that to protect your plants. But if you, know, if you have the predators there and they're doing their job and you do your pruning, you can avoid using all those products. Well, you know, not all the time, but most of the time. And it works for us. We use our fertilizers. Those you can't avoid, you need to feed. Other than that, check out our website. VasiliesGarden.com, everything I've spoken about is on the website at discounted prices. From me, Vasili, I'd see you tomorrow. Yeah, so folks, the Yarra Valley Plant Fair and Garden Expo is on this month, 23rd and 24th of April. Write it in your diary, book your tickets online, come down and say hello. Steve and Ryan's going to be there, I'm going to be there, talking all things about gardening, giving you all the advice we can, and a heap of stall holders, plants, garden tools, products, food, lots of entertainment. Come down and say hello, 23rd, 24th, Yarra Valley Plant Fair Garden Expo. It's all on this month. From Eva Silly, Maresi, see you there.